Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to this week's Fuse Meet session. I hope you're all doing really well out there in the cryptoverse. You're here with me, Ian Kane, and in this session, we'll be chatting with Ake and Antonio from Chainstack. How are you guys doing today? You good? Hello. Yes, yes, we're good. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. It's nice and warm over here today, so I'm having a great time. Antonio, you good? Yeah, good. I uh, just had my morning run, so pretty good. <laughs> Nice. It's all well stretched out. Beautiful. So everybody's ready. All right, cool. So founded in 2018, Chainstack delivers a platform it describes as a control panel for blockchains. The Chainstack platform operates across multiple clouds, supports a range of protocols, and is delivered as a service and enables enterprises and developers to rapidly build, deploy, and manage decentralized networks and services. Because let's face it, it's pretty hard, right? So uh, the service that these guys provide is one that is desperately needed. And for those that don't already know already, maybe this is the first time you've tuned into a Fuse Network Meet session. Fuse is a pretty unique blockchain that aims to bridge the gap between crypto and the real world. The tech stack alongside the new charge product is tailored to help small business, small, medium and large size business embrace Web3 crypto payments and also reduce their cost of sales and help them build out better customer rewards and loyalty systems all with really minimal knowledge of smart contracts and coding, which is kind of exactly what we need right now. And moreover, Fuse is EVM compatible. So it's capable of launching, you can port dApps and you can launch dApps that are already launched on Ethereum and Polygon and Binance, uh, sorry, BNB chain as it's called now. And we've got gas fees under one cent. So we've just la launched an article uh, titled 10 Reasons to Build on Fuse. And we kind of encourage people to check that out and see the compelling reasons. And with that in mind, it's time to welcome today's guests into the show, Ake and Antonio, and dive into Chainstack. But before we dive into Chainstack, fellas, I'd like to know a little bit about you two, about your, your backgrounds and how you got involved in this kind of crazy crypto world. And uh, yeah, tell us about yourselves, guys. Uh, yeah, thanks a lot, Ian. Uh, thanks a lot for the great introduction. Uh, as for uh, how we got into blockchain, my story is relatively simple i think um the first well, i'm not gonna say the first time you know i had bitcoin or whatever but i switched full-time to blockchain in 2017 uh and as i'm sure a lot of people did as well uh, and then like i know the bankers guys for example they got uh into blockchain 2017 full-time as well some of them so mm -hmm. me as well uh worked for a bunch of crypto companies uh most of them collapsed and then then i decided to go full time with the like with an infrastructure company like chainstack and chainstack was hiring so i joined chainstack and then the bear market started which was the perfect time to you know start building without any you know with with there wasn't like a lot going on that would that would uh, kind of impair my ability to work it was all quite all calm all nice uh, a lot of time to you know to do that yeah then I moved to Singapore, and there's a lot of hype happening in Singapore when it comes to blockchain. And then, and now we're building out this uh, awesome team of developer advocates and technical writers and technical copywriters. And one of our of our team's uh, objectives is to educate people about how to use, you know, the blockchain systems and infrastructure and all of that, and Fuse in particular as well, which which is you know basically help the adoption, get paid for it, and it's an awesome job. So yeah, yeah, that's my story. Nice, man. That's a pretty deep So, What were you doing prior to that then, before getting it like in 2017? Were you working in Web2 or was it like- Yeah, I was, uh, well, my story that I was doing, I'm, I'm actually have been doing technical communication kind of thing for 16 years. Wow. I started, yeah. And I did all the, you know, that's what a lot of, well, a number of people do. I did all the uh, usual jumps. I started proprietary software, then I went open source, yeah. then I went uh, blockchain crypto, which is, you know, I think the the uh, a decent way to you know to progress through these things. Yeah. And then you never you never look back really once you've gone into never. That. <laughs> How about, how about you, Antonio? What's your what's your background in? What's your story, man? How did you end up here in the, in the crypto verse? Uh, well, I'm a software engineer and I worked for a bank for almost 12 years and it was pretty boring because, you know, banks projects is like you end up doing mortgages, credit cards and things like that. So uh, after, after more than 10 years uh, 
yeah, I decided, yeah, I really want to go back to writing code and, and creating fun applications and applications that I really want to use. Not that I don't have a bank account, but things that are <laughs> more user focused. So yeah, in 2020, I quit my job and I started working on my own side projects and writing a lot of content during that time as well, because I was really into blogging uh, as well. And yeah, after two years, I built like a, a habit tracker, like weekly planner. I built, I started a podcast as well. I, yeah, I did a lot of things to learn a lot of new different technologies and libraries and programming languages. And, uh, and yeah, last year, uh, I said, okay, I want to get into, into blockchain development. Mm -hmm. and I started learning Solidity. Mm -hmm. And I started the blog as well. <laughs> and yeah, I did a lot of courses like in build space and uh, crypto zombies, all the typical ones. Yeah, uh, yeah I was sharing all, all everything that I learned in, in my blog. And so I did wow. tips. And I guess that's when Ake found about it. Uh, he contacted me on Twitter. Uh, uh, he told me, hey, we're building this team in Chainstack. Uh, you want to be part of it? Join in. Nice, man. Yeah. So all that hard work that you were putting in, Antonio, all that work you were doing probably for free, right? Like where you were doing your doing your blogging, yeah. making content, it paid yeah, off, one, it paid off. Yeah. That's cool, that's great. Like, Yeah, and that's one of the things that I tell uh, people what, that they want to get into the space is like, yeah. start a blog. I mean, yeah. I mean, that's, that will be super helpful, helpful for you when you're going to try to find a job, you have something to show, you can show your expertise and yeah. For sure, man. Like it's like a CV these days, isn't it? Like the old way of presenting yourself on a piece of paper, you know, this is what I do. It's kind of dead. Like you've got to prove that you've already done it and then bring it to the table and be like, yeah, I got you know what I'm doing. Just hire me basically. Very cool. Very cool guys. Nice stories. Nice stories. All right. So I always like to start at the beginning just to get an idea of who it is that I'm kind of talking to, what they're all about, you know, your ethics and stuff like that. So now we can kind of jump in a little bit but I, I also want to know about the team because I was hunting around on the website you guys have got a nice name for your team of chain stackers as you call them and um yeah tell us a bit about the team and like where you're based are you all spread out across the world and then also like why are you why is that team best to deliver the ambition of chain stack right so yeah I don't know who wants to take that but yeah Antonio you want to start yeah Yeah, sure. So, yeah, we're a, we're a fully remote uh, company. We are more than 80 people and we're growing super fast. Yeah. Uh, we were like, at the time that I joined, like at the beginning of the year, we were like 25, something like that. And now we're more than 80. Wow. So, yeah. And yeah, we are a, a, a blockchain infrastructure company. And uh, again, growing super fast. Uh, when I joined, we were in like, 10 different protocols, maybe less. Now we're in more than 15. Uh, we have launched a uh, few recently, uh, Aurora, Near. And yeah, we our focus is to have the best developer experience uh, and uh, a very, very good customer satisfaction. Nice. And yeah, for that, we focus on, on, on having a, a large engineering team uh, that allow us to include new protocols uh, as fast as possible and also having a, a, a large uh, support team. So if, if any user or project has any issues, yeah. uh, we try to uh, respond or fix uh, or, or solve any issues in, in less than 24 hours and in most cases in less than one hour. So Ooh. that's that's our main goal right now. Yeah, to, to nice. add to what, nice. to what Antonio said, we, uh, we were recently doing this story within the company I think we figured out we are in 20 plus countries right now. Uh, we have, you know, in the US, Latin America, uh, India, Europe, all you know, different parts of Europe, uh, Malaysia, Asia, uh, in general, Singapore. And the, I think, well, it's easy to say that for me, but I think the majority of the team, probably 90, 99% of the team that we have, they are highly engaged. They, they all, you know, they all love Web3. And I think it's one of the best jobs to be, to, to, you know, to be doing in the industry. 
when there is gold, you're you're kind of you know you're an infrastructure provider, so you get to work with a lot of different protocols. You get to learn a lot. Uh, you get you get to do all that stuff, and it's all you know it's like drinking uh, blockchain Web3 from Firehose. There is tons tons of stuff that you just learn daily, and it's difficult not to stay engaged with this. Uh, so it's kind of you know our team they're always everybody's always amped up. Hey, we're doing this new thing. Uh, that's awesome. We're going to learn how to how to you know deploy these nodes, maintain them, uh, and do all that stuff. So uh, it's pretty cool. We're highly international, speak different languages. Uh, we're always on Twitter, uh, on Discord, Telegram, you know, whatever. You can always contact us. Uh, and it's great to be bringing all this infrastructure and education into Web3 because uh, <clears throat> people think that we have Web3 is big, but it really isn't yet no. and it's very easy to make an impact by you know doing something positive in this space so Absolutely. that's part of the things that we love here yeah. yeah definitely we're still early right guys like i think a lot of people think the ship has sailed away the good crypt uh the crypto ship has disappeared but it hasn't even started loading up yet in my opinion like we're uh, we're still very early so very cool to hear that you've grown in that's a bear cool. market here, you know growing from 20 20 odd people up to 80 that's quite challenging right keeping everybody in but i can 100 percent believe um that everybody there is massively engaged because yeah with the clients that you're working with and the projects that you work on it's like exposure to the entire industry so very cool very cool all right thank you for that guys thank you for filling us in about the team so we know who you are we know who the team are and now we need to talk about chain stack a little bit i think and um what does it do, guys? What is Chainstack? What does it do? How does it work? And why is it good? Tell us a little something. Antonio? Oh, yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah, so we are a full Web3 uh, infrastructure company. So basically, we provide access to more than 17, 18 different blockchains, depending on when you're watching this, probably 20. Uh, so, and uh, yeah, we are focusing on uh, and these, these blockchains, they go from Ethereum, BSC, Polygon, Solana, Avalanche, Harmony, uh, Fuse, Starknet, uh, I don't know, what else, so uh, uh, Near, uh, Aurora, Arbitrum. I mean, yeah. Arbitrum, you mentioned. Yeah. Uh, so, so yeah, and we are, we are expanding to new protocols like almost well, lately every week, but almost every month normally. Uh, it's been like th this past month has been like super crazy for us. And we're focusing on, on providing uh, access to these blockchains and we, we give them access with uh, different cloud providers. So we are not like focusing in providing access in, in like with AWS, for example, or the cloud or Azure. We do multi cloud multi-region uh, that means that if you want your a node from, from you know, fuse and you want it to be handled by google cloud and you want it in I don't know, singapore we can make it for you so it, it, we offer a lot of customization in, in that regard um, and we also allow users to bring your own cloud which means if you have your own uh, uh, aws account you can use it with us and we will spin up an node in your in your account and that's that's super uh, useful for for developers and we are working in in in, um, in other things like apis uh, which i think we're going to talk later about and yeah. basically what we want is to simplify and, and improve developer experience for for projects because uh, i mean nobody likes to manage a blockchain node. It's like it takes a lot of time and keeping it's a great comment. Loading. It's so yeah. true. Like tell right. the truth, man. Like, tell it how it is. That is so true. That's so true. So yeah. Yeah, Sorry. I mean it's just like in the early days when I mean managing a web, a web uh, just a simple web uh, server is not that difficult. But mm -hmm. a lot of people deploy their, their websites on Vercel or Netlify or, or these providers that because it's I mean it's something that that it takes takes that that yep. pain out of, of the developer experience. So we want to do that, but for for Web three, and uh, yeah, 
we were we were in a few a few months ago in, in a conference and we were talking with some guys and, and they say uh, infra is not sexy so <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought that was super funny <laughs> uh, i said yeah we are we're working on that and, and yeah, so you gotta so are, you gotta make these things look more appealing and sexy at the same time yeah, as making we'll it look bring uh, sexy back yeah. <laughs> 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 who knew who knew who knew that chain stack and uh, justin timberlake were pairing up to bring sexy back i like it but it's I'm true sure they will launch an nft collection <laughs> <laughs> it's quite a it's like when you were talking about banking though isn't it antonio like it's the subject matter that a lot of people they're just not really interested as long as it works and everything is functioning and everything is happening correctly then they're happy but they don't really want to know the the nitty gritty of it and it's very time consuming right so yeah i can see why a service such as chainstack becomes fairly useful for people looking to escape that burden right like um but to, to yeah sorry for breaking up there but to add to what antonio said and <clears throat> something that a lot of people confuse that uh, on any network, there are nodes securing the network and there are nodes that you use to access the network, right? And so sec the nodes securing the network, validator nodes, mining nodes, all that stuff that, you know, has all those financial incentives and is basically sealing the blocks. We are not providing these nodes. We're providing the nodes that help people get access to the network, the nodes that developers use, that, you know, guys using, like people using MetaMask, Basically, the, what this means is uh, the higher the higher the count of nodes provided by Chainstack and services similar to Chainstack, uh, the better in, in, in the sense that you can see that the blockchain uh, technology and Web3 is getting adoption. So basically, mm -hmm. more and more people are deploying nodes, meaning more and more people need access to the blockchain network. Uh, meaning, you know, there is more and more people addresses uh, actually using the network. So uh, I think that's an important distinction. Another thing is you really need, uh, you know, to, to, uh, companies like Chainstack providing nodes, they are really useful. Uh, they make an impact on user adoption because uh, you need nodes in different geographical locations. Suppose you have uh, a decentralized application, for example, on Fuse, and you have mm -hmm. uh, you have growth of people in Asia, uh, and then you have all of a sudden you have people in Europe trying to access your application, and uh, because you had a lot of uh, a lot of a lot of users in Asia, your account in Asia, you deployed the nodes in Asia, but th those guys, those people in Europe, now they have higher latency simply because you know the signal goes. <clears throat> Uh, trips for a longer time to to where you know this now you need to deploy a node and provide the kind of similar experience in Europe and you need to load balance it you need to <clears throat> make sure you know the the uh, users in Europe are not a disadvantage in you know accessing your application decentralized application compared to users in Asia and vice versa so there is a lot of things that you know goes in there and it's all infrastructure it's I think it's 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 you know it's one of the keys to 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 real user adoption and you know people can do it uh, they deploy different nodes and do load balancing with Chainstack easily and they can you know developers they can focus on their decentralized applications on you know on all the sexy things and you know Chainstack does kind of hey it works it's nice so yeah, yeah that's, that's a really strong point as well especially the geographical locations as well like, like that's. Uh... That's a massive point that if you're trying to gain mass adoption of your products, then you do have to tailor it for each geographical area. So, yeah, massive, massively valid point there as well. And like you guys say, yeah, it's like the sexy stuff is making it sexy and the you guys are doing the background work so that they can focus on what it is they're trying to deliver with the best onboarding and things like that. But that's that's logical. That's a very logical approach. Why try to why should developers have to concern themselves with those things? That's what you guys are there for, right? Right. That, that right. Makes, right. That makes, right. That makes perfect sense. I mean, sense Web3, to... web, even Web2, it's all about sticking, uh, you know, putting together Lego style or the, all of those yeah. texts that, that are out there. That's how we make progress. That's how we leverage. That's how we accelerate, actually, right? So, yeah. 
In terms of like um, a bit of an off the side question here, but in terms of like sort of we're talking about adoption, we're talking about DAP projects. And I know that in the last sort of 12 years, we've seen this NFT rush, but now we're kind of in this GameFi hype where we're seeing DeFi evolve into a gamified version so that people can learn more about mechanics. But I guess the question for you guys is what kind of clients and customers are you getting approaching you most at the moment? Is it is it DeFi? Is it gaming? Is it metaverse? Antonio, you mentioned metaverse there. What's the kind of trends that you guys see out there at the moment, just from your perspective? I think I think gaming is the one that is uh, uh, like really the teams are working hard on it. Uh, obviously, DeFi is like it's not that uh, that big right now. It had like last year it was like super high. But I think right now it's gaming and particularly in Avalanche and uh, it's it's like super, super high, yeah. These are the things you're getting more approached on. No, it's like, it's absolutely true. Like the factual evidence and right obviously now. Okay. You, you can think of, of uh, metaverse, like it's kind of gaming uh, as well. Yeah, yeah, uh, entirely, so, entirely. Yeah, every, every metaverse uh, project has some game behind. So. Yeah, I think I think they're all uh, Lego style again. Lego style blocks. Same yeah. thing is happening. So, DeFi uh, is always part of GameFi, and DeFi kind of established all this uh, automated market making, all the decentralized yeah. exchanges and synthetics. You know, whatever they have, I think it fits. Uh, so that's where uh, that's what GameFi can build on. Like recently, I think Uniswap announced that they are doing exploring the the options of how to provide liquidity for NFTs. Uh, yeah. Which is, you know, and NFTs are one of the core things of uh, GameFi, and and and, and Chainstack is actually a gold member of the Blockchain Gaming Alliance, which is, oh, nice. you know, uh, on the same level with Ubisoft and AMD and the other guys. <clears throat> so really uh, we are really, really into blockchain gaming, GameFi, uh, and you know, DeFi as well, and all of these things. So. I think it's uh, uh, to me personally, gamify is really, really interesting. Uh, it's, it's something that's super relevant. I can't moving forward. I can't see how you know gamify and NFTs are going not to be a part of Web two or you know the gaming industry. Yeah. I I don't see I just don't see the future where they are not part of it. So it's major shift is happening. I think it's super awesome. It's very cool for you guys as well, right? And especially this kind of yeah. increase in investment coming into Web3, people looking to build. We're also seeing now perhaps the Ethereum merge will cause a bit of a Ethereum re-spark. You know, people launching dApps on Ethereum again has kind of become, they've, they've favored L2s and uh, over the last couple of years. So I think we might see that again. So it's all very good for yeah. you guys. Well, That's true. Well, Just to mention, uh, yeah. Yeah, sorry, I, I was in the, one of the Web3 meetups at the Google office, uh, I think a month ago or so. And there were, uh, I think there were more, so there were two sorts of uh, roles inviting their VCs and founders. And I think there were more VCs than founders. So there is, the yeah, this bear market, if we can call, you know, what's having a bear market is different yeah. from the previous one in that there is just a ton of VCs looking to fund stuff. There's just uh, a ton of money. In the record amounts of money flowing in like it's absolutely yeah. insane right now and um but yeah good time because although we're in a bear market i mean it, we've, we've been in this situation for a while now but it feels quite good actually guys like i don't know about you but it is, obviously checking your portfolio doesn't feel very good but in terms of like um the workflow building having a bit of peace and quiet and less noise around to kind of focus on what it is that that we want to deliver i think it's really cool like it's it, it's been a nice few months personally I, th I find it to be very productive and useful yeah. and like you guys say you yeah. i agree yeah. with you 100 percent. in change they've been primarily developer builders company with the engineering culture we can actually back up what you say with you know with the numbers as in uh when the bear market started we started growing even more so you know people are actually building more now that the bear market is happening Getting uh ready. they're yeah then 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 when they were when the you know the, the bull was happening there was just so much destruction like there, there too so much destruction well that's it they're yeah, constantly yeah. checking prices and things yeah, and yeah. Doing, so we need yeah. to get away from 
<laughs> last, bull run, last bull run, I simply had to turn off notifications on my Twitter because that was just getting crazy. Bitcoin up, Bitcoin down. I, I just couldn't focus. I, just, I think, I think my phone. I think my my phone thought that I'd lost it or something. You know, like uh, <laughs> I wasn't using it anymore because it kept trying to prompt me, like, "Hey, your screen time is down." And I'm like, "Yeah, I know it's down. Thank God, like I'm not staring at it every day." But yeah, completely. Like it's a good time, and I think for companies like ours, like Fuse, like Chainstack. It's a good time, and that's why we're here. So, right. so we're talking about Fuse and Chainstack. That's why we're here today. There's been a, a, this integration of Chainstack and Fuse, and I want to ask you guys, like, what kind of benefits does this bring people in the Fuse network and the Fuse community? Can you tell us a little bit about this? And uh, yeah, it's an exciting integration, I think. Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, I find it personally super exciting uh, for a few reasons. One, one is like I said, this just means adoption. This just means adoption. We get to see, uh, personally, I get to see the numbers, you know, how the project is, grow is growing. I get, I always get to see the projects that sign up with us when there is a new protocol launching. And I see, you know, people interested in Fuse, they're trying to build stuff on Fuse. The, uh, the infrastructure part is also, you know, I can, uh, which, which is important, like I said, for node latency, for infrastructure to, you know, to, to maintain all the uptime for the node. Uh, it's, it's also something that, you know, that just uh, takes away all of, the, all, all of this headache of the projects and developers and they, they can just focus on building, which I always find, you know, exciting. I personally get to work on, on, on the protocol. I get to do all the tutorials. I get to explore how it works uh, and educate the communities. And now that Chainstack has thousands and thousands uh, probably dozens of thousands uh, of developers and projects, so they get uh, immediate exposure uh, yeah, to Fuse. Yeah, they can go, they, they, they receive the email, they, they, they go to Discord, they start communication, they start exploring the, now that we released Fuse, uh, they get, you know, to deploy the nodes, they see how they can, you know, spread, spread the nodes, nodes across the world in different locations. And then, uh, then I personally, which is super fun as well, uh, we did this uh, launch of Fuse. I think Fuse migrated to from uh, to the Nethermind. I'm not sure if you know the Nethermind yeah. client. Yeah, yeah. Which was uh, which was very fun for me to explore because we for EVM based protocols we usually do a Go Ethereum, and <clears throat> Nethermind was super fun as well. And then um, on top of that, the uh, Chainstack does not simply provide you know all those geo distributed locations of the endpoints of the nodes, but you also get some of the like debugging tools with the with the node and with the protocol, meaning that if you want to replay a transaction on, for example, mainnet, uh, you you'd be hard pressed to go and find an endpoint uh, yeah. or a node, which is a very heavy call to yeah. to to find what's wrong with your transaction, how to debug that, but you can do that with Chainstack as well. You get to uh, use archive nodes as well. We also support uh, archive nodes in Fuse. Uh, and, you know, an archive node is where you can retrieve all the states uh, from when the Fuse chain was started, unlike the full node where you get just a limited number of states. Meaning that a lot of, uh, all those projects that use analytics that need to see, you know, what was happening in the past. Uh, that need to retrieve all this uh, past data. They get to use uh, nodes deployed with Chainstack Fuse nodes now as well. So they get to uh, build all those amazing uh, analytics services, probably like the trader as well. So it's just it just opens a lot of exciting opportunities, a lot of to to a lot of different types of projects. So you know you can debug, you can do analytics, you can do whatever. I think it's awesome. Yeah, it's so cool. And Fuse apps, like what we're trying to sort of cultivate at Fuse are everyday applications and, and payment applications. So runtime, latency, these things are massively important because if you have an everyday app, you know, if your banking app doesn't work when you're trying to make a payment, that's a problem, right? And we need to we need to ensure that things are smooth and running correctly. Otherwise, people won't be so keen to onboard into this world, right? They need it needs to be as good if not better than web two. So these advances give Fuse developers the options to build out better products. So yeah, that's, uh, that's the crux of it really, isn't it guys? Like 
right. the developers on the developers in the Fuse network are now going to have access to more powerful tools, which means they can build better applications for customers, basically. Chainstack has some really significant partnerships that I can see on, on, on site and that I've been digging into as well. And But I wanted to zoom in to a few of these partnerships to kind of um, to, to give people an idea of how Chainstack handles these companies' infrastructure, basically. So I know we've got a couple of examples. We've got Chainlink, we've got DAP Radar, uh, there's other, and CoinGecko as well. So tell us a little bit about this. What do you do with these clients um, and how are you helping them achieve their goals? Yeah, so great question. Being the infrastructure provider, uh, what we do, what we do is we actually provide nodes. We we, <clears throat> we provide the core the core thing that the the uh, the customers need. We have different customers, different customer types. Uh, I don't have the full <clears throat> uh, layout of all the customers because they are all different in their ways. But uh, customers like Deprader, for example, right, more of an analytics company. Yeah. Uh, that needs to be able to retrieve in all this heavy, heavy data, or like for TVL, for for all these uh, stats that the projects have, and it needs to be able to to index all the uh, decentralized applications, what they are doing, the transactions on all those different chains, uh, which is you know, which I think if you if you try and do it yourself is borderline borderline unmanageable, or it's like X fifty the cost it, it that is. you can get. <laughs> I, can definitely, I can definitely tell you that it is unmanageable and yeah having done right. work with that radar i know from the early days that we were trying to manage that process in-house but uh yeah pretty and, difficult yeah you, and that yeah that's one of the things you really you really need to scale i mean if you can start with in-house with one chain then you need the second chain and if you're kind of okay i have two evm chains but then you have solana what yeah. do you do with that right and then and then you have a sudden, which sudden explosive growth of users, which is something, as you know, happens very, very often in Web3, which is why we are all here, which is, you know, and it's a great thing. Then you get, uh, you need to support all this growth and you, 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 you literally can't without the infrastructure provider like Chainstack, but without, yeah. with us, you get to deploy all those nodes. That's, for example, for the Predator Analytics. Then we have a customer like Chainlink, in Chainlink to be able to run a node, they need uh, they need to be always retrieving data of all those uh, uh, protocols that they support. Uh, so same thing, uh, they need stable connection. They need you know they need a node uh, that's always up to date. And Chainstack being an Oracle provider, that's uh, one of the core components in DeFi. You know, branching out to to, to other uh, areas as well. So super important to be able to have a node that's not failing, uh, which is you know what Chainstack does. Mm -hmm. And then uh, customers like CoinGeek or CoinGeek, for example, is using us specifically for Solana. Uh, and Solana, as you probably know, is uh, you know all all of the all of the nodes all mm -hmm. not, not not just Solana, but Solana as well. They require expertise to to maintain that. And uh, I think CoinGeek is using. Uh, uh, our Solana now is for data in their CoinGecko terminal, which is super awesome, by the way. I'm not sure if you have checked, checked that out, but I did. Uh, it's very, uh, it, it, yeah, it's, it's really nice to, to, to use that. So, you know, just term key kind of thing. Uh, you get uh, you get a deploy node. You, you know, if you need some additional features, you talk to us as well. Uh, but you just get to be building what you love instead of focusing on stuff that, you know, it requires expertise to maintain, which is not sexy, but you know it's sexy for us because we get to, to work with all of those sexy projects. So yeah. I dread to think what sexy is for you guys, right? Like <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. lines and lines of code, right? But um <laughs> interesting about chain um chain link as well, because I think there's a yeah. probably a, a bit of a misconception in the industry slightly that chain link is doing a lot of heavy lifting on behalf of DApps, you know, and actually you're doing the heavy lifting for chain link. <laughs> so it's kind of a you know a lot of people talk about Chainlink as a price oracle and and, and probably believe it's doing a lot of the the lifting there. But uh, yeah, interesting nuance to it, absolutely. Because I think there's so much depth to this industry. People either try to understand everything or they just skirt around everything, right? So you can yeah, I often hear things and I'm like, where did you hear that? It's not. <laughs> it's uh, it's quite interesting. 
All righty. Thank you for that, guys. Very cool. So you've got some really good clients um, and things are going well for you guys so far. And um, but one of the things that you've identified, and I saw this through your kind of content that you're creating as well, is that you need you see this need to onboard more Web3. You, you need more Web3 developers, basically, in order to scale this technology. We need more people who understand how to build in this space. So you guys have been in building mode, but um, you, you're also looking to create more tools and help developers as well. So tell us more about this and, and this kind of drive to get more Web3 developers in. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah, go ahead and play. I'll, I'll just join in. Okay, <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah, I mean, we, need, we know that there is, there is a, a lack of, of content uh, and tutorials about uh, Web3. And yeah, for us, we've been, we've been focusing on uh, adding more protocols, but then it's new protocol. It's, it's different that you, you need more content specific for, yeah. for every protocol. And uh, as, I mean, we are part of the content team at, at Chainstack and basically our day-to-day -day job is like creating content, educational content for all these different protocols. And that means creating tutorials, uh, uh, blog posts, uh, we are getting into video tutorials as well, and uh, just from the start, like from from explaining things like what is a blockchain, how it works, like yeah. we need to we need to get this this information out there and, and help people because there is a lot of web to developers that basically they are not getting into web three because they think like maybe this is a scam or it's just a Ponzi scheme, you know, all this stuff that that came with the with the prices going so high and so yeah. low, and, but what we need to explain is, is the technology behind it. Uh, yeah. And once what you once you get to understand the problems that it's solved, it's, it's when you when you get interested in, in it, uh, and when you get uh, when you want to to build things in, in this. And and yeah, one of the things that we're doing is creating as much educational content as we can, and we have launched the Change Stack Developer Hub because. Uh, we are just a team of 10, 15 people. Yeah, it's down there. Yeah. Because uh, we, are, we, are, we are a team of, of 10, 15, uh, which is a lot of, of developer advocates and, and developer relations team uh, yeah. guys. Uh, but we, we cannot we cannot produce as much content as we want. So we know there are a lot of good uh, developers and people that want to get into writing technical content and writing tutorials. So basically, that's what the Change Stack Developer Hub is. So we, if you have an idea for an article, a tutorial, just an informational piece, you can send us a, a, a proposal. And yeah. if it gets accepted, we will work with you in, in, in the article. Uh, we'll help you if there is some code, if you have some uh, questions about it. Uh, we'll work with, uh, with you and uh, your post, or your article will be posted in, in the Change Stack blog. We will help you promote it. And you get paid for it, obviously. Nice. So uh, we think it's a pretty good initiative. Uh, we have uh, quite a few proposals. Uh, we released the first article last week, I think. Uh, so yeah, it's in progress, and I think it's a pretty good initiative for for people, even for people that is getting into space and they want to build up their their CV. Uh, it, it's a great. Idea. It's the way, isn't it? Like what we said earlier. And I think, Antonio, what you said there really interests me about the kind of Web2 developers being a little bit concerned about Web3. But I don't think we can blame them, actually, can we? Imagine you're, you you fly down from space and you read the headlines of Point Telegraph just, just for a moment, you know, just for example. What would you think about crypto? Scam here, hack there, exploit over here. You know, I can forgive people for thinking that, but that's what that's our job to make people see it's for the technology that that stuff is just kind of hype and it's not really that interesting actually so right, right. interesting yeah point to to, well. to add to what you guys are saying that's how coin telegraph and the sound the other media that's how they get the clicks right which is yeah of course in a way web, web, web two web two way of doing things uh yeah but also there is a lot of content in the web3 space but what we focus in are on mostly is content being content useful uh, mm. and high precision. High precision meaning that uh, everything that we produce must always work, must be easy for people to, to consume. Uh, in you know, it must not be some like hey, deploy 
ERC20 token, you know, there's just too many spirals like this. You want to be really useful. <clears throat> uh, and as well, and again, again, let, we are kind of to be, uh, to, to, to produce more substance. And because yeah. in this web space, you know, web three space, a lot of people are trying to produce content, they produce actually content. It's very easy for, uh, you know, companies like Chainstick or for teams like ours, not, not, not to brag, but to, to, to make an impact on this because, you know, we actually really care. And you, we really produce things that, that work. For example, some of our tutorials, uh, like the tutorials we, we have in Chainstick documentation, including the for Fuse as well, you mm -hmm. don't even have to be developer, but, you know, if you go and spend like three, four hours on a tutorial, you can go from zero to a working decentralized application and you, you get to, you get to use it as well. I think it's, it's very useful for uh, web three adoption. Uh, that's yeah. one for the developer hub as well. Again, uh, if people go ahead and, uh, you know, submit their stuff to, to our developer hub, they get uh, to be published with chain stack, but also, and get paid obviously, uh, but also they get a byline. Uh, as in, you know, on their CV, hey, they, they get uh, under their account published a block at Chainstack, but also in the process, we don't just go and, and publish the, the stuff that people uh, produce. They get yeah. to work with our technical copywriters. They get to, you know, get the copy polished. They get their pieces of code polished by our developer advocates. So they kind of get the best version of, uh, yeah. you know, of, of what they want to produce. They get paid. And they contribute positively to the Web3 space. I don't see how you can lose with that. So uh, that's one of the things that I love about our, about our jobs. Yeah. Strong points. Yeah. Like and, uh, having technical writers, I think there's two types of content out there in the crypto world. There's content built for clicks, like we just said. And right. a lot of the time, it's not actually very helpful. The title reads quite helpfully, but the actual content itself is not very helpful. And then there's proper technical analysis and writing by writers that understand what they're doing and have worked in this space for years. And also you have to have an ability to kind of break down complex topics, right? And, and break it into readable, understandable segments. Right. I write a lot of content too, and it, it's, it's a challenge. Right. It really is a challenge, like to try to educate, make people understand and not confuse people as well. So big challenge and obviously you need help in doing that so very cool that you're sort of bringing in the community to help with that process as well so the link was at the bottom there we flashed it up but for anybody listening that's interested in that the link is also in the description of the video click on that and you can find out more about the information there as well all right so moving on a little bit fellas we've got some uh, I saw you dropped a, a tweet the other day and it felt to me like a little bit of alpha was being was being thrown out there on on twitter and uh, you guys are launching an NFT API, as far as I saw on there. And um, I would like to know more about this, please, guys. Tell me more. All right. Yeah, the, the, that's true. Uh, funny story, just before this call, uh, I had one of our product managers uh, talk to me and say, hey, we need to produce the docs for the API that we haven't rolled out yet because <laughs> people want, want it that much. Before <laughs> so, we talk so, about it, we better yeah, produce how, how, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because internally because yeah internally it's being produced but uh that's i honestly i never expected nfts to be as big as they are but uh i i, I believe in nfts now uh a lot because nfts a lot of people when they talk nfts they think uh you know basically uh gifts jpegs you know whatever <laughs> funny pictures but they don't get uh to to see how there are like nfts which is you can turn NFTs into escrow tokens. You can use NFTs in 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 gaming. You can use NFTs in, in all the decentralized autonomous organizations and all the governance. There is just so much complexity to all of that, <clears throat> which is an awesome thing. But to navigate all this complexity, to be able to build again user adoption, user experience, user interface on top of that, <clears throat> we are trying to again remove the expertise required to that. Uh, to help people with adoption and remove the complexity from, you know, kind of not make developers invent the same wheel over and over again. We're just, uh, we're just working with them to produce the, the, the tools that they need, the NFT API tools, which, you know, they don't need to write the, any, you know, complex piece of code, complex, just don't do, not do any complexity in there. 
and be able to fetch the NFT met metadata uh, to get all the NFT transactions, you know, all the stuff that they need with one single uh, kind of uh, NFT API product uh, that we're going to be rolling out soon, which, you know, again, should be just another step in the direction of projects and developers being creative, being, doing the useful stuff and just relying on, on something that's already developed. Nice. Yeah. Should be very relevant too. We're seeing a lot of market NFT marketplace action happening right now. Whereas OpenSea was kind of this big leader for right. such a long time, it feels like they have been uh, or they will be knocked off the off the top spot pretty soon. To be honest, like um, as with all things, we get development and evolution. So yeah, I've been watching that space quite closely. It's very interesting yeah. right now, heating up yeah. definitely. So, Ma I cool. think Magic Eden, Magic Eden recently they became the unicorn, right? Anything you know, NFT is just the context escape. It is there is just. I couldn't agree with you more though. Like the the kind of again education misconception. Yeah. Um, Board Ape Yacht Club seems to speak right. for all NFTs. Like no, that's one collection. That's such a good point. Yeah, that's such yeah. A good point. Like it's a. Yeah. Uh, I'm personally far like yesterday. I saw an announcement from Flow that they're doing their they're, they're partnering to do tickets and ticket stubs. So for example, guys, you know, you go to a gig or a concert or something like that. And rather than your physical ticket that you might keep in a drawer for 20 years to prove that you went, you've got this digital stub and then you can showcase them on your, in your portfolio. That's the kind of stuff that really kind of right, interests right, me. Right. That's really cool. And um, yeah, not the, not the speculative side so much guys. Maybe that's what we're all saying really, isn't it? It's for the tech. Uh, that's true. <laughs> Not speculative. We, we really are in it for the tech. That is. <laughs> we really are. We promise. We, we really, really are. are. Yeah, yeah, that is actually true. <laughs> well, you don't work in this space for so many years and put so much focus into what you're doing if you're not in it for the tech, right? If you're oh, in, it for, yeah. in it for the speculation and you're in it for the money, then you can do that and probably do a full time job at the same time. If you're in it because you're excited by the technology, that's why we're all sitting here today, right? So we're getting towards the end of the session. So the last question really is about the roadmap for you guys. Like what's going on? I mean, we just spoke about the NFT API. That's exciting. Um, any more exciting stuff? Like no pressure. I'm not pushing. But uh, any more things that are happening the rest of the year, guys, that you want to talk about? The race the, the tons. Uh, so <laughs> do you want me to? Yeah. Or uh, do you want to add something? I, I I can start. I can start. So, we yeah, well. First I, of all, I, I might say something that then we have to. Do. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right. So yeah, we have sons. Obviously, that's in, again. You might see me as this, you know, uh, kind of person who is always excited, gun ho person. <laughs> but, but but that, <laughs> but it really is the the thing with Web three is just a lot needs to be done, and there is not enough people. So. You can basically do, you know, whatever. You will always have an impact. You will always be helpful. So, but we are trying to focus currently on top of those uh, NFT APIs and all the protocols that we are supporting. There are other things that need to be covered as well. Uh, again, to remove the complexity of the adoption path and all the obstacles, which is storage, you know, decentralized storage. Uh, there are things like uh, data availability. You need to always to be able to, you know, decentrally serve the data uh, to people and for, for those NFTs as well and for all other projects. Then you need to be able to index uh, index the uh, data on the, the blockchain data because all of this blockchain data, they, it, that, it, like it kind of, it's immutable, it is there, but you can't really use it in the in a live scenario where you need to like have a million requests and you need to be serving uh, a state and I don't know a thousand blocks in the past on Ethereum to uh, in, in response to a certain request from user, for example, what you know what their balance was two years ago, right? You 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 need to replay a ton of transactions to to be able to do that uh, on the blockchain, so. That's where indexing comes in, and we 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 will roll out some of the indexing features, I think so. Uh, and you know, for example, like if you go to uh, the live charts of any decentralized exchange and you see the token price and everything, there is a lot of complexity going in behind behind that. They are not; it's not really being served live of the blockchain; it's being served live of the of the indexer, which is indexing the which is returning data of 
uh, a blockchain network and takes time to, to do some of the stuff, uh, some of that stuff that's in the past. So uh, we are trying to cover that. Uh, and on top of that, we have a, uh, a pre we have a research team, a change that we have the product team. They are super engaged. They are like we are. So the, today, today, I, was, uh, I think uh, one of our salespeople, uh, Chris Brosson, tweeted, uh, "I think we are doing uh, 24 seven. I think I think we are doing a reply 25 eight. <laughs> That's what it really feels like. So we are always exploring all the stuff we're doing. A lot. We are, there is a lot of research going on." Uh, and it's not that we are looking for problems to solve. We are trying to uh, solve the you know the biggest problems and then moving to other problems. There is just too much to do, which is again awesome. Yeah, it's a nice, it's a nice problem to have, right? And so yeah, uh, super nice. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah uh, just wanted to mention as well that uh, we have this this page ideas that which is. Uh, like a kind of a featured request page uh, where if users want us to to build on something or try to fix a specific problem, they can create a request there and we will, uh, we will work on that. Nice. Very cool. Very cool. Very cool. All right, guys. Um, yeah. So we've come to the end of the session. I really want to thank you. Um, you've both been great guests, both outlining what Chainstack does in a really easy to understand way. Obviously, that's what you guys are doing on a daily basis. So it makes sense to me that you're able to do that. Um, any final shout outs? Any Where can people best connect? People who have listened to this and maybe they want to connect with you to write content. Maybe they just like, maybe they're developing an application and they'd like to know more about your pricing. Um, where is the best places for people to get in touch with you guys? Just just come to changestack.com. We have all the resources listed there. Uh, we uh, check out our docs as well. There is a Twitter list uh, the, of, of our developer advocates. Feel free mm -hmm. to message me <clears throat> on Twitter, on Discord. Mention Ake. I, I, I'll, I'll always be there. Uh, and yeah, my main message to, to you know to whoever is listening, there is a lot of work to, to be done. Come do that. So day after day, like recently, I think today today we were discussing there was a person on Twitter hmm. who became a developer advocate in six months, and that's not an uncommon story. Which hmm. means you know there is just a lot to be done. If you if you think blockchain is is difficult and complex, it's really it's not. It's it's. All, all, I mean, all Easy, those right? Legos. Right. <laughs> I mean, all those tools. They are being developed. They you know daily. And for, if you if you think of getting to blockchain and you do nothing today and, uh, and you come back in a year, it will be even easier for you for you to get into blockchain because it, it, it would have been a full year of all those tools getting developed. So don't be afraid. Uh, come do you know check out our tutorials, build on Fuse, build on all the protocols that we do. Do do at least one of the tutorials. Do the tutorial on Fuse today, and you know tomorrow you'll have a a very simple but working decentralized application on Fuse that you can interact with. And, it's, uh, and hey, that's a per that's a start to become a developer and making an impact in this space. That's that's my message. I'm 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 like now convinced. I'm ready to go off and start contributing over <laughs> it. Now. You should. Be. But he's very, yeah. good. he's very good, isn't he, Antonio? He's very good at uh, describing. But. Um, it's a good point though, man. And the energy is real with you guys. And I think that's really important. The energy is real and the ideas are real and, and what you want to do. You're not here for a good time. You're here for a long time. I think it's really cool. And I think it's great that Fuse is partnered up with, uh, with people such as yourself. And I think that's another reason why we do these shows, right? It's very easy to look at the Chainstack website and be like, oh, Chainstack, it's, it's, it looks great. Everything's brilliant. Um, but actually to meet the people who are working there on a daily basis to understand um, what drives you guys and why you're doing this, I think is is so important for everything that we're trying to achieve right now, like transparency at its highest level. Like we talk about transparency all the time, but uh, half the companies we, we look at, we don't know who runs them or anything that's happening there. So it's, uh, that's true. it's kind of ironic, right? So... Thank you guys for your time today. A last shout out. You've done an amazing job of explaining everything really concisely. 
for anybody that, um, yeah, you can unpack this video in your own leisure. Obviously, if you've got questions, all the links are in the video description at the bottom there. Head over to Fuse if you've got questions for us. Head over to Chainstack if you've got questions for those guys. And yeah, we look forward. And as um, as Egg says, you can you can go there, watch a few videos, and start building a decentralized application. All right, it might not be the next Uniswap, but it definitely gives you a starting point, right? And I think that's the most important thing. So for me, thank you very much for tuning in, guys. It's been great, and uh, we'll see you all soon. Thank you to my guests again. And yeah, thank we'll catch you soon. Thank you. Thank you very much yeah. for providing the platform to, to speak. That's that's an important thing that you're doing. So yeah, it's awesome, awesome. Thanks, man. Like it's been, yeah, it's been fun. Like we enjoy doing this. We wanted to let our community know who our partners are in this space, why it's beneficial. So these are the best ways to do it, right? So I wish you both a great rest of your week. Keep writing, keep educating, keep on going. And I'm sure we'll meet again. All right, fellas. So take care. Thanks everybody for watching. Thank Have you very much. Day.